afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Please rise for our opening procession and the presentation of colors led by the Westchester County Police Department's Ceremonial Unit Color Guard, followed by the pipes and drums of the Police Emerald Society of Westchester County and students from the Elmsford Union Free School District. standing for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please remain standing for the national anthem. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight was so <laughs> as we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare the bombs bursting in flag was still there. Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet
Please take your seats. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Tara Rosenblum. I'm a longtime journalist with News 12 Westchester and News 12 Hudson Valley. Welcome. And thank you all for coming. I'd like to thank the students from the Elmsford Union Free School District for leading us in the Pledge of Allegiance. The Westchester County Police Department Ceremonial Unit Color Guard. The beautiful music performed by the Concordia College Brass Ensemble from the Concordia Conservancy. And the pipes and drums of the Police Emerald Society of Westchester County and the Westchester County Police Ceremonial Unit for presenting a wreath of remembrance at our beam of steel. I would also like to thank the Fairview Fire Department and the Westchester County Department of Emergency Services who are proudly displaying the American flag in the spirit of unity and patriotism as we come together this afternoon to remember, reflect, and honor on what is such a personal day for all of us. I was asked to speak to all of you for a minute or two about my own personal experiences from 9-11. That, of course, takes us back 18 years to a morning that felt eerily similar to the one we had this morning. I was working for a television station in another market, and I remember, like all of you, the horrific images coming across the screens. And probably, like many of you, I looked up in disbelief. I didn't think it was happening. It took a while to realize it was real. And then panic started to set in. I had loved ones who worked in the towers and near them, and I couldn't reach them on the phone. And fortunately for me, I didn't have time to get lost in my sense of panic because I was sent out to report live at the airport for those excruciating few hours when you all remember, we didn't know if there were other planes still up there. And I went through the maturations of thinking I'd lost my loved ones. I'm looking out into all of your eyes, it chokes me up. And I had just lost my best friend and my stepmother the month before in another violent, senseless act, and I thought to myself, I can't go through this again. Fortunately for me, my, those closest to me were okay. But as I look out in these first few rows into all of your eyes, I know the outcome wasn't the same for all of you. And what I want you to know on this 18th anniversary, from the bottom of my heart, my message to each and every one of you is that you're not alone, that we all come together, all of your elected officials, all of us here, we come together and we grieve in one voice, one community, one family, one heart today. 9-11 left a permanent scar in all of our hearts and continues to harm. One of the most gut-wrenching experiences of my career, my 20-plus career telling stories, one of the hardest stories I've ever had to tell and continue to tell is the plight of our, the health crisis impacting our heroic first responders. They asked no questions when they rushed in and yet all these years later continue to fight for the medical benefits they so deserve. So we'll be saying a lot of prayers today. What I ask is that you keep all of our unbelievable first responders, so many of them, call the Hudson Valley home in your hearts. So yes, 18 years ago, countless lives changed forever. All of us here in New York, here in Westchester, will never look at the skies again, and nor should we. Thank you for having me here this morning and giving me this tremendous honor to serve as your mistress of ceremonies. And now we will get started with the program. 
I'd like to introduce Father Joseph McShane, President of Fordham University, who will lead us in prayer. Thank you, Tara. My sisters and brothers, on this, the 18th anniversary of the terrorist attacks on our beloved country and city, a day on which so many of our friends and family members, so many of our heroes with whom we lived and shared so much, we gather to remember them, to celebrate their sacrifices, and to commend them once again to God, who is the source of all life and the source of all hope. As we enter into our prayer, I invite you now, if you would, to bow your heads, to close your eyes, and to see those whom you loved once again. Look at them. Speak to them in your hearts. Gaze upon their faces. Be comforted and inspired by their goodness. And surrounded by such a gathering of saints and angels, saints and angels who continue to watch over us and over the city that they served so well and enriched with their love, let us commend them once again to God with these words. Into your hands, O Father of mercies, we commend our brothers and sisters in the sure and certain hope that together with all who have lived lives of goodness, purpose, and selflessness, they now live with you in peace and in the light of your loving presence. We give you thanks for the blessings which you bestowed upon them in this life, for they are signs to us of your goodness and of our fellowship with them and with all your saints and angels. Merciful Lord, turn toward us, listen to our prayers, open the gates of paradise to your servants, our friends, and help us who remain to comfort one another with assurances of faith until that day on which you call us home to yourself and are with you and with our beloved brothers and sisters forever. Until that day, O oh Father, strengthen us with your love. Fill us with a firm resolve to honor these, our loved ones, not only with these humble prayers, but with and through lives of loving service, so that we can together and in their memory build here on earth a kingdom of peace in which justice reigns and which every tear is wiped away. And we make this prayer, this sacred day, in your holy name, amen. Thank you, Father. Now I'd like to introduce you all to Matthew J. McCauley, 9-11 first responders advocate and firefighter. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and to our distinguished guests, and to the families of those that lost loved ones on this day 18 years ago, as well as to those that have lost loved ones since as a result of their exposure to the dust and the debris and the rescue and recovery efforts that they worked in. I'd like to thank County Executive George Latimer for inviting me to speak here today. My name is Matthew McCauley and I was a 9-11 first responder. I'm a retired New York City police officer and a paramedic and I was just one of thousands that took part in the rescue and recovery efforts at Ground Zero, the Pentagon, and Shanksville. I'm also an attorney but don't hold that against me because <laughs> All I work on are 9-11 issues and cases. I'm proud to say that I was a team leader with the Feel Good Foundation, a member of the team that spent hours, days, and at least 18 trips to Washington, D.C. since last October uh, to ensure that Congress didn't forget about all of us. Um, to make sure... <laughs> and by all of us, I mean the 9-11 responders, survivors and their families to make sure they pass the extension of the September 11th Victims Compensation Fund through the James Adroga, Ray Pfeiffer, and Luis Alvarez Health and Compensation Act. I had the honor to work with John Stewart, with John Feel, and a very good friend of mine, Luis Alvarez, and a very good friend of mine, Luis Alvarez, 
to make sure, Detective Alvarez, to make sure that the 9-11 responders, survivors, and their families were protected. We did this to make sure that Congress did not forget about us. Why did we do this? The best answer comes from when Louis testified before the House uh, back in June. He said, I've been to many places in this world and done many things, but I can tell you that I did not want to be anywhere else but Ground Zero when I was there. The same was true for everyone at Ground Zero, the Pentagon, and Shanksville. We were all where we wanted to be. We were part of showing the world we would never back down from terrorism and that we could all work together. No races, no colors, no politics. I will tell you that that is how every 9-11 responder felt on that day and every day thereafter that as part of the Rescue and Recover Act effort. Many of them are here today. Just ask them how they felt during that time. That quote will be read this Saturday at a ceremony in Long Island at the 9-11 Responders Memorial Park when we add and read the names of 205 additional responders that passed away over the last year as a result of their 9-11 illnesses. Many of them are from Westchester County. We will never forget them. Proud to say the County Executive Latimer has also ensured that the 9-11 responders from Westchester County that have passed from their illnesses will also never be forgotten. He's commissioned a group to develop a memorial to honor those 9-11 responders that have passed from illnesses related to their rescue and recovery efforts. That includes police officers, firefighters, EMS workers, construction workers, nurses, doctors, chiropractors, and even just volunteers like people in the audience here that went down to help because they felt they had to help. All 9-11 first responders. That memorial will stand alongside the rising just as the responders stood alongside those that they searched for and recovered, never leaving them alone. I'm the co-chair of the committee and together we will complete this memorial. We of course welcome the assistance of those that wish to be involved. The memorial will be another symbol of how this great country will never back down to terrorist activities. It will also be a symbol of how this county will never forget those 9-11 responders who gave some, but especially those that gave all on that day and after. Thank you and God bless America. And now I'd like to introduce Westchester County Board Chairman, Ben Boykin. Thank you, Tara, and thank you, Mr. McCauley, for your work on 9-11 and your continuing work for those first responders. We gather today to commemorate the lives of the Westchester residents and those former Westchester residents that were taken from us on that shocking day 18 years ago. We stand with their families, friends, and their loved ones. We gather to remember and to speak the names of the lost, but we also gather to listen. Psychologists talk about the healing power of bearing witness. Those who bear witness speak unbearable feelings out loud. By listening to you, we do a small but an important service. We can never feel your loss, but by listening we say, we see you, we hear you, and if you need someone to lean on, lean on me. Hopefully that helps a little. Today we remember, we bear witness, we listen, but we also recognize that we have work to do. Many first responders, as you've heard, have succumbed to the long-term effects of their work after the attacks. Many others continue to live with the impact of their sacrifice. If you look on the back of your bulletin today, you see the names of 21 Westchester residents who have succumbed to 9-11 illnesses. Ensuring that these selfless heroes get the ongoing help that they deserve requires our continued vigilance as public officials. We pledge again that we will never forget you and that we will continue to stand with you because that is an important. The attacks of 9-11-2001 changed all of us. They stole our loved ones, stripped us of our innocence, shook our sense of security, and unfortunately sometimes make us more suspicious of one another. 
it changed the way we live today. But let us honor the memory of those we've lost by holding even tighter to our values. Let us confront hatred, intolerance, and violence with a renewed commitment to each other as fellow human beings. Because it is through a commitment to love, compassion, empathy, common understanding, and mutual respect that we can shoulder the burden of our grief and rise together to face any challenge. On behalf of the 17 members of the Board of Legislators, we will never forget, we will always remember, and we will always stand with you. Thank you. Joining us now is Imam Mohammed Shafiq Chase, from the Islamic Center of New Rochelle, he will lead us in prayer. Auzu billahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajim. Bismillahi r-Rahman r-Rahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alamin. All praise and thanks is due to Almighty God, Lord of all the worlds. Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim, the most merciful, the all merciful. Maliki Yawmid Deen, master of the day of requital, the day of accountability. Iyyaka na'budu wa iyyaka nasta'een. Almighty God, lead us along the straight path. Iyyaka na'budu wa iyyaka nasta'een The path of those whom you have blessed. Ihdina as-surat al-mustakim as-surat al-lazina an'amta alayhim ghayri al-maghdubi alayhim wa la-tawneen And not the path of those who have wavered. The path of those who have gone astray. The path of those who have committed this heinous act against innocent lives. We pray for all those who have lost their life, and under the same voice we pray for all those who is left behind, the loved ones, to give them the strength and the mercy to deal with this grief year after year for as long as they live. It is said in the Holy Scripture, Ya ayyuhan nas, O mankind, all of mankind, Jews and Gentiles, Christians, Protestants. Ya ayyuhan nas, inna khalaknakum, that I've created you from a single mate. And I've made you into nations and tribes, different colors. I never asked to be born from an Indian parents. I never asked to be born in South American or third world country. But I was born in that circumstances that he has created us with different language. And the reason that he had created us in this diversity is that we should come together to know one another. And I thank the executor of the county and all the leaders to put this program together that bring us together to commemorate a great loss that not only we live differently, we think differently after this act. I share with you also my nephew at 30 years old. He's living with sarcoidosis and a pacemaker at 30 years old as a first responder. So everyone across every culture, every religion, every faith was affected and still are being affected as we hear year after year, someone has died again from this affection of this heinous crime. You know, one of the greatest words of advice when this nation, the nation of Islam begin, the first word that came from the Prophet is Afshu Salam, to spread peace. Spread peace wherever there is hatred. Wa'at imu tu'am, and feed the poor and the needy and the destitute. Wasilul arham, and develop good relationships. The longest study in human history conducted in Harvard University is entitled A Good Life. Beginning in 1938, they decided to track 128 young men. And they took their blood type, 
interview their family for almost 100 years, every year. Many great people came from that group of, of men, from Harvard student to people from the ghettos they have tracked. And one president of the United States came from that pool of study, George Bush Sr. He was part of that study. What they concluded after 100 years of this study, that the thing that overcomes every difficulty in life is the person not that become a professor or a doctor or a lawyer, that person who have good relationships. Even so much so that when they're afflicted with certain autoimmune disease, because of that relationship, it becomes less of an impact on that person. I'm here to all of you, to Rabbi Blake, our Father. I pray not only that Almighty God bless all of you and give you the courage to move forward, but I pray for one day when all of us, Muslims and Christians and Jews, can come into one sacred place and pray to that one God, the God of Abraham. I pray that Almighty God give you all the strength and every year after this year for 18 years. May Almighty God bless the children that lost their fathers, that they should grow up to be courageous human beings. For Aristotle says that we should not live at too extreme. We should not be a coward or we should not be ra rational. We should live in courage. And I pray that Almighty God give all of you the courage to live every day and become an exemplar against this hate that perpetrated against the world. And when we unite in one space, then we can find that one, fight that one common, that one common enemy, that enemy of hate. I thank you very much, and may God bless all of you. Imam, thank you so much for your beautiful sentiments and joining us this afternoon. I'd now like to call up your Westchester County Executive, George Latimer. Thank you very much. It's a uh, blessing to be here with all of you and uh, all of us coming from a different place. Those who are family members of those that were lost that day and that pain that still exists with you to this day and always will. To the first responders, those who worked on the pile and are now seeing what the accumulative impact of your sacrifice is, as Matt and Peter Woods and others will, will talk about in just a second. The veterans amongst us who are here who served your country in time of war and in time of peace and for whose gratitude we continue to express the men and women of government, those who were department heads and commissioners in this government, many of whom were there before I got here, and many of whom are going to be here long after I'm gone, but who are committed to the people of Westchester far more than to a particular leader of the government at any one point in time. To the people who are here uh, in elected positions, my colleagues and friends who serve in the state legislature, led by our state senate majority leader, Andrea Stewart Cousins, and Shelley Mayer and Assemblyman David Buckwald, the members of the county legislature under the leadership of Ben Boykin and their service as a co-equal branch of government, the members of the clergy, the members of the media who are here, the current first responders, the police and firefighters and the EMS people. All of us are here from some different path, but we are all here together today. Let me talk first about today, and then let me talk about that day. Today, being here, I attribute in this location at Kensico Dam in a few minutes to go to the, this beautiful sculpture behind me, the rising, and to see the names of the uh, 123 names we're going to read, 110 uh, on, on the statue. I attribute that to the vision of an individual. It took a lot of people to make it happen, but it took the vision of an individual to see that it would come to pass. On 9-11, he was our county executive, and I know because I was the county chair of the Board of Legislators. And I went up to the ninth floor, and I saw just what he had to do as a county executive, never knowing that I'd have that opportunity in the future. But Andy Spano's vision helped create this monument and this permanent recognition. Andy, please stand for the applause of a grateful county. We have now taken on the task in, in this generation to honor those individuals who have served and are now suffering from that service in the period of time after the towers collapsed. 
the pile and thereafter, and the health issues that have followed. We have, uh, by our current count, 21 individuals from Westchester County who have died from 9-11 related diseases. Men, women cut down before their time, before they had the opportunity to have a full and complete life because they went into a situation that nobody could calculate and still gave service to their nation. And with the help of people like Matt and Peter and the committee, we will design a suitable remembrance for them so that years from now, 18 years from today, those individuals will be recognized and never forgotten, those Westchester residents who also made this great sacrifice. To be here today is difficult for those because we saw what happened that day. This is not a distant memory to us. I've often thought as I've traveled, I lived outside of Philadelphia many years ago, I had the chance to go to the Valley Forge National uh, Historical Park. And at various times in my life, I've been elsewhere in Pennsylvania, in Gettysburg. And when you see Valley Forge, Pennsylvania, you know the history of what George Washington did and how he held the Continental Army together long enough to get us our independence in that Pennsylvania city. A hundred miles or so to the west, when you tour Gettysburg, you see what happened in the great Civil War between sections of this country and how this country developed, as Lincoln said, as a new birth of freedom coming out of that terrible conflict. And you see the monuments in that Pennsylvania town. Another hundred miles west of that, there's a monument to an airplane that crashed in a field in Shanksville, Pennsylvania. That's the memory that we lived. And it means something different and deeper to us. But if we don't make these memorials, how will young people know? How will they understand what happened that day, the loss of that day, what it meant on that September 11th in 2001? So we create things that are dramatic, breathtaking even, so that we won't forget. And we have a visual remembrance of it, so that when this generation of Americans are gone, the next generations of Americans, the next generation of Westchester people, will remember that once there was this moment in time, and the people that made the sacrifice in that moment in time. And that is our obligation to make sure that memorial happens. Let me speak of that other day that happened 18 years ago. When I think of 9-11, I think of it in the context of a conversation I had with my dad when I was 12 or 13 years old. I uh, did my homework on the dining room table in the middle of our tiny little house on the south side of Mount Vernon. And my algebra teacher, Rayella B. Healy, gave us a quiz every Friday in algebra. I wasn't particularly good at algebra. And I had to study every Thursday night before the Friday quiz. And I hated it. Friday is almost Saturday and Sunday. If you can remember in your day, Friday, Thursday night, you could almost taste the weekend. The last thing you wanted to do was study algebra. And so like any self-respecting 12 or 13 year old, I moped. I sat at the kitchen table with my head in my hands complaining, I have to take a test every Friday, I have to study every Friday. My father, who was a head of maintenance, Beach Point Club in Mamaroneck, he worked by the sweat of his brow, the strength of his arms, walked in and looked at me. He never hit me, but boy, I thought he was gonna. He slammed his hand on the table and he looked at me and said, tested every week. He said, son, when you're a man, you're gonna be tested every day. Study, learn that. I got my B in algebra, <laughs> barely. But my father's words I've never forgot, that you're tested every day. And you're tested when you're not expected. It's not the LSAT for my friends in law or the board, the, the law boards that you sit for. It's not the test that you get when you and your spouse bring a new life into the world and you look at this baby and you say, oh my God, we have to raise this child. It's crying, what do I do? That's a test. The first time you're, you're bone tired and you have a long distance to drive at night and you're testing your skill behind the wheel of the car to make sure that you can make it through all that distance. There's so many different ways we're tested. But we know and we'll rely on the father and the, the reverend and the imam and the rabbi to help us through these moments. That there is an ultimate test that every one of us here today will face. We will face it. And that comes at the end of days. We don't know how it will come, and we don't know when it will come. We all hope 
We will be in our late ages, late 90s, early 100s, peacefully passing on, no pain, all of our families surrounding us, and a chance to assess a, well li a life well lived. The people that we lost on 9-11 had the same aspiration we did. They didn't know that by going to work at Cantor Fitzgerald or Aon, by being at the window on the worlds for a breakfast meeting, or an early conversation in an office in one of the towers, or for that matter, in the Pentagon. They didn't know when they boarded that plane in Boston and Flight 11 bound for San Francisco where they would wind up. And you take that and you personalize it into yourself. I spent a number of years as a corporate executive before I went into this line of work. And I was on many a plane in my 30s and 40s with notes prepared for a business meeting or a client presentation somewhere else in the country. I try to imagine what it would be like for a person sitting across the aisle and seeing some commotion and the person across the aisle to say, hey, fella, are you with us? We've got to storm, we've got to storm that cockpit. Somebody in there is going to crash this airplane. And, and you look up from your notes and you say, what? I'm, you know, I'm not trained to do these things. And then you realize what's happening. And at that moment, you're tested. At that moment. At that moment on the 102nd floor, as you organize your work for the day, one of the innumerable meetings that I put these poor commissioners through that they have to prepare for. And you're with your administrative assistant, and then someone tells you that a plane has crashed into the building. And as you race for exits, you realize there are no exits. There's no way to get out. And you look at each other and you realize this is the test you never thought would come. It's arrived and it's facing you. First responders are trained every day to put their lives on the line to protect us and our property. And the first responders that day were prepared to do what was necessary. When those firefighters walked up the stairs to get people to come down those stairs with 60 pound packs on their back, they knew they were walking into a dangerous situation, but they wanted to live as much as any of us did. But they put that at risk, and the police and the EMS officers as well. That test is what our relatives faced that day. That test is what those names on that wall face this day. They were human beings just like us, no different. I don't know who was a Democrat or Republican. I don't know who was fat or thin. I don't know who was tall or short. They're humans, just like us. And they face the tests that we, we hope we never face. So my theology teaches me that they're at peace. It teaches me that they're in the hands of paradise, whatever paradise is. I have to believe that. You have to believe that. We cannot believe that the evil that was done that day is the final word. We have to believe that this day of voluntary service is there to change the narrative of 9-11. We have to believe that as we came together right after that day, Peter Wood said this this morning in Hartsdale, as we came together right after that, we can find our way back to that again in this country. The unity that we had in the weeks, in the month or two after 9-11. Because at the end of the day, we're really all alike. The old ones of us and the young ones of us, the men and the women, whatever we are, we're all alike. We all face that test. And we all have to remember when people do brave things, when they go above and beyond what you expect a human being to do, then we ought to remember those people forever. And that is what we're doing today here. We're remembering those people forever. Your county executive, George Latimer, thank you for your words of inspiration. Ladies and gentlemen, we will now read the name of the Westchester residents who perished on 9-11 and those Westchester residents who have died from 9-11 related illnesses. After the names are read, please stay with us. We will have a moment of silence.
Good afternoon, everyone. I'm District Attorney Anthony Scarpino. William Abramson, Peter Craig Alderman, Kazuhira Anai, Sharon Balcom, Yelena Belovlovsky, Michael J. Berkeley, George Bishop, Michael A. Bocardi, Michelle Renee Bratton. Good afternoon. I'm County Clerk Tim Idoni. Thomas M. Brennan, Jonathan Eric Briley, Mark Brisman, Lloyd Brown, Ronald Buca, Tom Burke, Mary T. Caulfield, Alex Saccone, Kevin Francis Cleary. Robert J. Call, Helen Carson Kittle, Joan Sillahan, Patrick W. Dennehy, <coughs> Dwight Darcy, Simon Dedbukash, Simon A. Danani, John Dougherty, and Marissa Denardo. My best friend, 18 years today, and it seems like yesterday. I feel your spirit always with me and I know your soul is at peace. I love and miss you more every day. Please keep watching over us. God bless. Kitley Coble County Legislator. Christopher Michael Duffy. Paul Fiore. Thomas Fitzpatrick. Ke Kevin Joseph Frawley. Alan W. Friedlander, John Patrick Gallagher, Gallagher, Charles Garabini, Peter Galinas, Kieran Joseph Gorman. Good afternoon, I'm Margaret Kunzio, County Legislator. Yuji Goya, Gary Haig, Richard B. Hall, Lieutenant Vincent G. Halloran, FDNY, W. Ward Haynes, Nobuhiro Hatatsu, Katsuyuki Hirai, Thomas Warren Holweck, Jr., and Montgomery McCullough Hoard. Louis Stephen Ingleterra, Ariel Louise Jacobs, Arthur Joseph Jones, Douglas G. Karpoloff, Satoshi Kikuchihara, Takashi Kinoshita, Glenn Kerwin, Richard J. Clares. Gary Kochler. Hi, I'm Nancy Barr, County Legislator. Vanessa Langer, Dennis Lavelle, Joseph Levy, Michael A. Lepore. Richard Lynch, Jr., Michael J. Lyons, Katie Marie McCloskey, John T. McGarland, Jr., Francis McGuinn. I'm Catherine Parker, Majority Leader. 
Michael McHugh, Jr., Barry J. McCune, Robert C. McLaughlin, Jr., Christopher D. Mello, Yamel Marino, William Minardi, Krishna V. Murthy, George Morrell, Dennis Moroni. Good afternoon, I'm John Testa, Minority Leader. Takuya Nakamura, Soshi Numata, James A. Oakley, Diana J. O'Connor, Amy O'Doherty, Marnie Roney O'Doherty, Samuel Otis, FDNY, Sean Gordon Corbell O'Neill, Chris Olegewitz. Good afternoon. My name is Alfreda Williams. I'm vice chair of the board. Timothy F. O'Sullivan. Michael B. Packer. Thomas Palazzo. James Nicholas Papa George, William H. Pullman, Herman Kumar Putra, Vincent A. Princiota, Vasa Raju, Robert A. Rasmussen. Good afternoon, I'm Damon Marr, County Legislator. John Rio, Joseph R. Reverso, Gregory E. Rodriguez, Edward Ryan, Tatjana Rehova, Sam Salvo, Eric Sand, Robert Scandoli, Marion Serva. Good afternoon, I'm County Legislator Mary Jane Shimsky, Majority Whip. Daniel Shea, Joseph Shea, Linda Sheehan, Thomas J. Schubert, Alan Schwartzstein, David Silver, Michael John Simon, Thomas E. Sinton III, Rochelle M. Snell. Good afternoon, County Legislature David Tubiol, Robert Spiesman. Joseph P. Spore, Jr. Timothy C. Stout. John Swain. Sean Patrick Tallon. Michael A. Tamuccio. Kenichiro Tanaka. Joanna Fiddle. Good afternoon, Gordon Burroughs, County Legislator, Minority Whip. Jeffrey Walsh, James Arthur Waring, Timothy Matthew Welty, William Wick, Mark Zeppelin, Evelyn Zeminski, Joseph J. Sukala.
From this point forward, all the names that will be read are those who have died of 9-11 related illnesses. New York City Battalion Chief Kevin Burns Sr. New York City Detective Joseph Seabrook. Peekskill Detective Charles Wassell Jr. And my father, New York City Police Captain Ronald G. Pfeiffer Sr. New York City Firefighter EMT Louis De Pena Jr. New York City Detective First Grade James W. Monahan. New York City Police Sergeant Patrick Boyle. And my husband, New York City Firefighter Michael O'Hanlon. You're with us every day. We love you and we miss you. New York City Police Sergeant Patrick Coyne. Fairview Firefighter Robert A. Mentrosti. White Plains Fire Department Clark Douglas. And my husband, Harrison Police Officer Walter Mallinson, my hero. New York City Police Officer Joseph Hyde, Yonkers Police Officer Anthony Majori, Yonkers Police Lieutenant Roy McLaughlin, and my brother Yonkers Firefighter Neil Tyndall Sr. Jr., beloved son, brother, husband, father, uncle, friends, loved them all, especially his fire family. You will not be forgotten. New York City Police Officer Nicholas Finelli, New Rochelle Police Officer Kathleen O'Connor Funiciello, and our dad, New York City Transit Authority, James Patrick Sullivan. We miss you every day, Dad. New York City Firefighter Kevin J. Nolan, New Rochelle Police Officer Mark Gatto, and my husband, New York City Firefighter Lieutenant John Thomas Moran, we miss you very much. Please join us now in a moment of silence.
And now I would like to introduce you all, you can take your seats, to Rabbi Jonathan Blake, who will lead us in our closing prayer this afternoon. Thank you, Tara. You spoke too soon. I would like to invite the congregation to rise. In the Jewish tradition, the number 18 is symbolic of life. It is therefore poignant that we would gather on this 18th anniversary of the attacks of 9-11. We have come to honor the lives who perished and those who worked valiantly to save and defend life. May their lives always be recalled for blessing. In that prayerful spirit do we now lift up our still broken and yet ever resilient hearts unto the eternal God. We pray. Source of all life, watch over the souls of those whose lives were brutally taken from the world of the living on September 11, 2001. Guard them with your loving care. Enfold them forever in your embrace. Send the light of your divine compassion to the victim's loved ones, to all the spouses and lovers who lost their constant companions, all the fathers and mothers who lost children, all the children who lost parents and brothers and sisters, and the great brotherhood and sisterhood of friends who continue to miss them. Eternal God, bless those whose heroism on that fateful day will forever be inscribed in the book of life and in the record of human valor. Dear God, above all, help us the living to love all the more those whom are fallen loved in life and to champion the causes they so cherished. Help us, eternal God, to build a better, stronger, safer, more resilient, less fearful, more united states of America. In the names of our loved ones, help us, O oh God, to pursue justice in the face of evil and compassion in the face of fear and the rhetoric of division. Lift us, O oh God, to attain the summit of noble character and renewed hope for our country and our world and all the human family. And together in faith, let us say, Amen. You may now take your seats. Ladies and gentlemen, it has been my absolute honor and privilege to serve as your MC this morning and to pray and reflect with all of you today. I now invite you to walk to the rising sculpture where we have flowers placed by all the names. We must never forget, but we must always rise. Thank you, everyone. <laughs>